welcome to the session on role of innovation in organizations friends let me introduce you to the topic innovation and managing innovation is a key strategic issue in any organization innovation is defined as creating better or more effective or more efficient processes and services or generating the ideas or culture that will breed this creativity this is coupled with a willingness to implement changes to existing methods or techniques in order to gain the benefits of greater efficiency friends innovation can take different directions as it impacts products and processes this includes changing the method that a process takes in how it is delivered to the end user changing what services are offered and this might include discontinuing outdated services or support friends this session will give you an idea about the innovation as a concept and its importance in any organization it will also explain you different methods and sources of doing innovation there are certain conditions which leads effective innovation so this session will also talk about protecting innovation in organization the session will give emphasis on those conditions and methods of protecting innovation and creativity let me explain you the objectives of the session the objectives of the session are to make you understand the concept of innovation and its approaches importance of innovation in an organization you would be able to understand types and sources of innovation it will also give you an idea about conditions for effective innovation at organization level and methods of protecting innovation and creativity so let's start with understanding the word innovation friends innovation is the multi stage process whereby organizations transform ideas into new or improved products or services or processes in order to advance compete and differentiate themselves successfully in their marketplace innovations vary considerably in their nature innovation is conceived as a means of changing an organization either as a response to changes in the external environment or as a preemptive action to influence the environment hence we can say that innovation is broadly defined to encompass a range of types including new product or services new process technology new organization structure or administrative systems or new plans or program pertaining to organization members innovation as a process involves different stages it includes the first stages which involves creation generation implementation development and adoption the second stage is social which involves organizations firms customers social systems employees and developers third it is affected by means which involves technology ideas inventions creativity and market it is also affected by nature so the next is nature which involves new improve and change next is type which includes product service process and technical and the last is an aim that involves succeed differentiate and compete now let's see types of innovation two of the main approaches to the classification of innovation are on the basis of the nature or degree of innovation and 
on the basis of type of innovation respectively. The nature or degree of innovation refers to the newness or degree of novelty involved and leads to a classification of innovations into radical or incremental that has been said according to Besant and Teed in 2007. According to Knight in 1967, many classifications of innovation types have been proposed over the years. One of the earliest models proposes the different types of innovation which includes organizational structure, production process, people and product or service. Binary models proposed by Bentil and Jackson dept even in the 1970s and 1980s discuss various administrative, technical, incremental, radical, product and process as types of innovation. More recently, a number of integrative models have been proposed all of which identify number of different types of innovation. For example, Oak in 2007 gave types of innovation which includes product including radical and incremental, service and processes including administrative, service and production. The types of innovation in general includes number one, product or service innovation which is concerned with the organization's new product or service offerings. Second is production process innovation which refers to the changes to the organizational operations and production. This is also usually initiated by technological advancements. Third is organizational structure innovation which is concerned with the organization's authority relations, communication systems or formal reward systems. And the fourth is people innovation which is relating to changes to the people or staff within an organization including changes in staffing levels, personnel, job roles, cultures and behaviors. Friends, any change in the product or service range an organization takes to market, this is clearly understood form of innovation and involves the creation of new products and services usually via research and development departments. Also, any change in the application of a product or service away from its original purpose, for example, using personal computers as a vehicle for communication rather than standalone items and eventually internet as a vehicle for commerce as well as more general communication. Any change in the market to which a product or service is applied away from the originally identified market for example, medical drugs develop for one population becoming a successful intervention for another population. The story of Vigra within Pfizer is a clear example of product develop for one population having significant value for another population. Friends, any change in the way a product or service is developed and delivered away from the original operational and logistical design. For example, major developments are taking place in the field of online learning, a significant move away from the traditional approaches to education, training and development. At present, many organizations are simply putting face-to-face -face teaching materials online without appreciating the need for fundamental innovation in the design, development and delivery of online education. There is also a special category of innovation that focuses upon an organization's development of its core business model away from its current or previous business model. The financial services are witnessing significant developments in business innovation. The range of organizations that now seek to generate significant revenue from offering financial services is much broader than what was formerly restricted number of providers. For example, food sector 
SMEs offered a wide range of examples of innovation. They were able to classify their innovations into product, process, position or paradigm innovations. Further, there is evidence that food sector SMEs are engaged in a range of innovation types, although a greater number of examples were offered for product innovation than other types of innovation. So, we can say that an innovation is a far deeper process than simply improvement and the change it brings is also far long lasting and full of impact. Now, let us understand sources of innovation. According to Peter F. Drucker, there are seven sources of innovation. First, the unexpected. Friends, innovations can take place unexpectedly. They can happen by chance. Someone might just stumble upon a new idea or product. There is a long list of unexpected innovations in human history. Even fire is considered an unexpected innovation that humans stumble upon. Another example is dynamite. However, an interesting thing to note is that several important innovations in our history have happened unexpectedly. Many times, while scientists are looking for something, they stumble upon something else. Next is incongruities. When the need is incongruent with the supply, innovation might be born. In an attempt to resolve the existing incongruities, people might innovate. For example, as the population of cars grew, there was a shortage of parking area. In an attempt to solve the incongruity between parking area and parking shortage, the smart car was born. Smart car is a small car that can fit in small spaces. Incongruities can be an important source of innovation. It is basically in the human nature to try to fill the incongruities he sees around him. Next is market structure. Friends, an existing market structure can also give rise to chances of innovation. This is how Google was born. Google shaped the search engine market. Before Google, the search engines were not as perfect and Google brought all of it in order. There was so much information scattered over the world wide web. Google made this information searchable. Thus, the world wide web gave rise to a market structure where a search engine like Google could flourish. The world wide web paved way for interconnection. Google created a search engine that was linked to all searchable data. Next is necessity. Necessity is the mother of invention, but it is also the mother of innovation. Let us say microscope. It was born out of the need to delve deeper into the microbial world. Needs always set us thinking. Innovation is based upon bright ideas. The human mind thinks of new things that can better fulfill an existing need. In this process, he or she thinks of feeling his or her own needs in the new ways and by devising new products and mechanisms. Next is demographics. Friends, our lifestyles can also be a source of innovation. We all have our own lifestyle needs. For example, we feel the need to smoke. However, since smoking is dangerous, we made e-cigarettes to satisfy the urge. Lifestyle needs are not small needs and their fulfillment an important requirement for us. This is where innovators sometimes find major opportunities. Next is changing perception. Friends, changing perception regarding things can also give birth to innovation. Earlier, the overweight people were seen as healthier than the leaner ones. However, the social perception of healthy has undergone a big change where fat people are seen as obese and unhealthy. People feel the need to remain leaner 
and healthier. Based upon this change perception, a flood of healthy and low calorie foods came to the market. Next is new knowledge. New knowledge can also be a source of innovation. Whether it is nanotechnology, biotechnology or even artificial intelligence, new knowledge in any area is a source of innovation. The science keeps progressing. Every year new areas are discovered and much gets added to the existing base of human knowledge. This new knowledge paves way for innovations that can sometimes be life changing. Healthcare is an area that has over time been heavily affected by such innovations. Whether they emerge from the fields of biotechnology or nanotechnology, however, one can find many more such examples in his daily life. There can be some other sources of innovation also apart from the ones Drucker discussed. Innovation can be born out of passion or adventure or even of a hobby. Let's now understand conditions for effective innovation at organizational level. Important point is culture. Friends, innovation depends on having a supportive organizational context in which creative ideas can emerge and be effectively deployed. An informal, open and inquiring environment that values experimentation is essential for innovation. Culture change is without doubt the most difficult and least understood area of organizational life as has been told by Qureshi and Nicholas in 2004. Culture, however, is often the most difficult part of an organization to define or even understand, let alone change. The culture of an organization is the result of many interwoven factors. Some of these are considered and explained here. Experience. Friends working in silos within the same four walls with the same people reduces the likelihood of generating ideas for innovation that has been said by Wolpert in 2002. One feature of the most innovative organizations is that they are comfortable adopting ideas from diverse and surprising sources. To successfully think about new ideas, staff must have the ability to harvest ideas from a range of different sectors, places and individuals. Next is skills. It is important to ensure that relevant staff have the requisite skills to support the development of innovation at different stages as told by Ling in 2002. Evidence also suggests that different skills are required at the first stage of generating ideas then at the later stage of implementation. Ensuring that managers have this full range of skills may be a significant challenge for some organizations. Next is autonomy. Friends, as described by Prather, Nizov, Krebendam and Lewis in 2000 and 2002 respectively, freedom to develop is widely recognized as a prerequisite for innovation. This can involve deciding what to do, how to approach a problem or just a general sense of control over day-to-day -day work to achieve the overall goal. The aim of an innovative organization is to have reflective practitioners capable of evaluating their practice and open to testing and trying out new practices. Next is leadership. Chief executives most likely to make innovation happen are those with a clear vision of the future operation and direction of organizational change 
and creativity as has been told by Skin and Maclom in 1998 and Osborne in 2008. Friends, leaders have a central role in creating and maintaining a set of cultural values. They can develop their values in the organization, motivate employees to pursue goals that they may not otherwise attempt, encourage the need for change and convey the means to achieve that change as has been researched by Tries and Bayer in 1993. Next is favorable attitudes toward change. Friends, evidence suggests that appointing an innovation champion, that is someone responsible for encouraging innovation, can support the introduction of innovation in an organization, as has been described by Hovell in 2005. These individuals are usually enthusiastic, proactive, and are able to enlist the involvement of others in the innovation process, promoting risk-taking and using insight to find bold new ideas. Next and the important is greater decentralization and flexibility. Friends, organizations that are structured organically are more likely to enhance organizational capacity for innovation. Necessarily, then, the organization's capacity to move financial or other resources around different projects and activities can enhance its ability to address issues where and when they emerge, as given by Dougherty and Hardy in 1996 and Nohria and Gulati in 1996. Friends, now let us look into methods of protecting innovation and creativity. Creativity is the emotional lifeblood of entrepreneurship. Without creativity, thousands of companies would not have been launched. However, it is an element of entrepreneurial life that isn't easy to safeguard under the law. As a general rule, a mere idea or creative concept does not qualify for patent, copyright, trade secret or trademark protection. The right to the exclusive use of an idea is lost by voluntarily disclosure unless the following elements are present. First, the idea is in a concrete form. Secondly, the idea is original and useful. Thirdly, the idea is disclosed in a situation in which compensation is contemplated. If this test is satisfied, the idea may qualify as a property right and may be protected under theories of implied contract, unjust enrichment, misappropriation, breach of fiduciary relationship or passing off. Recovery under these circumstances usually depends upon the relationship between the submitter and the receiver of the idea. Friends, your manufacturing innovations are a valuable asset. They can make business more efficient or set it apart from your competitors. The main tools for protecting original and innovative ideas and practices are intellectual property rights. These rights include patents, copyrights, designs and trade secrets. However, as a general rule, the law of intellectual property seeks to protect and reward the creative firm, innovator or entrepreneur for efforts made by prohibiting misappropriation or infringement by competitors. It is crucial, therefore, that the legal considerations to protect with different methods. Let's understand these methods. First is branding. Branding is the process 
involved in creating a unique name and image for a product in the consumer's mind, mainly through advertising campaigns with a consistent theme. Branding aims to establish a significant and differentiated presence in the market that attracts and retails loyal customers. It is important to maintain your brand to grow your business successfully. Second is a trademark. A trademark generally refers to a brand or logo. Trademark registration can also be obtained for a business name. Distinctive catch phrases, taglines or captions properly used and promoted a trademark may become the most valuable asset of a business. Trademarks such as Coca-Cola, HP, Canon, Nike and Adidas serve as an indication of origin of the goods as well as an indication of quality. It is also essential to obtain trademark registration for the business name or trade name under the Trademarks Act. Friends, registration of a company or business name under the Companies Act does not in itself give protection against others who might commence using identical or similar marks. Third is patent. A patent is an exclusive right granted for an invention, which is a product or a process that provides in general a new way of doing something or offers a new technical solution to a problem. To get a patent, technical information about the invention must be disclosed to the public in a patent application. Fourth is copyright. Copyright is a legal right created by the law of a country that grants the creator of the original work exclusive rights for its use and distribution. This is usually only for a limited time. The exclusive rights are not absolute but limited by limitations and exceptions to copyright law including fair use. Copyright is a form of intellectual property applicable to certain forms of creative work. Some but not all jurisdictions require fixing copyright work in a tangible form. It is often shared among multiple authors, each of whom holds a set of rights to use or license the work and who are commonly referred to as rights holders. Fifth is a trade secret as a protective device. Friends, the best way to protect creative ideas and concepts is for them to be developed into a trade secret. Under the law, a trade secret consists of any type of information including a formula, pattern, compilation, program, device, method, technique or process that derives independent economic value from not being generally known to other persons who can obtain economic value from its disclosure or use. Friends, the information does not need to be unique or even invented by its owner to be protected as long as the data is kept confidential and provides value to the company. A company uses its trade secrets to provide with an advantage over competitors. Therefore, the corporate owner must treat the trade secret as confidential and proprietary. The scope of protection available for trade secrets may be defined by a particular contract or fiduciary relationship as well as by state statutes and court decisions. And the last is registered design protection. 
Registered design protection is also very important mechanism used by the company. A registered design is a monopoly for a design. For example, tread pattern. When applied to an article, for example, a tire, and is granted under the laws of country, the registered design is filed in. A registered design protects the way a product looks. The registered design allows the owners of the design to grant access to or exclude others from making, selling, offering for sale or hire the design protected by the registered design. The exact monopoly the design covers is contained in the drawings in the registered design. Friends, now let me conclude what we have seen in this session. We have seen that innovation is defined as creating better or more effective or more efficient processes and services or generating the ideas or culture that will breed this creativity. The types of innovation includes products or service innovation which is concerned with the organization's new product or service offerings. Production process innovation referring to the changes to the organizational operations and production. Organizational structure innovation is concerned with the organization's authority relations and the people innovation relating to changes to the people. We have also seen there are different approaches and sources of innovation. Friends, branding, trademarks, patents, copyrights and registering design protection is very important aspect for the organization. We can say considering above all points that better innovation creates better organization. I hope 